started already with Lewis structure last time. So if you're going to recall the Lewis structure that we have, so we follow these uh, steps. We're in the first thing that we do is we calculate the uh, number of valence electron and then write the skeletal structure of the molecule or ion and then distribute the electrons to the atoms surrounding the central atoms or atoms that satisfy the octet rule. And any atom or uh, electrons that are in excess, you're going to put it in the central atoms. So we're going to expand this knowledge today. And hopefully we're going to end this chapter today. Okay. So we have started doing some Lewis structure last time. So we're just going to continue and uh, fine tune how to write the Lewis structure and know more about the Lewis structure. So the next thing that we have here is this question. Phosphorus pentachloride exists in solid state as ionic compound PCL4 plus and PCL6. It exists in the gas phase as PCL five molecule. So write the formula or write the Lewis structure for PCL4 plus. So we're going to write it like this. And then what do we do? Get the valence electrons. So phosphorus has how many valence electrons? Anyone? Five. Okay, so it has five. And then you have the four times, how many valence electrons for chloride, for chlorine? Okay, so it has seven. Now, what do we do if we have a charge? So depending on the charge, we might add or subtract the number of electron based on the charge. So what is the charge of the electron? Positive. Anyone? Positive. Negative. Okay. An electron is a negative. So if you have a positive charge, that means you have to subtract it with one electron because that means it is deficient in electron. So if you have this, you subtract one from a positive one. So Five times four times seven, that's 28 plus five, that's 31. Four times seven is what? 28, right? Plus uh, five here, 32 minus 33. one. So you have 32 electrons. Okay, and what you're going to do, you connect it. So how many you utilize? One, two, three, four. So that means you have eight electrons. So you still have 24 more electrons. And what you're going to do, you're going to distribute the 24 in four chlorine. So that means each of them would have six electrons. So in this case, you're going to put this bracket and put the charge plus. That means it covers the whole Lewis structure. Okay. So this is what we call the Lewis structure of PCL4 plus. Now, what if we try to do it the other one? This one, PCL6 minus. So how are we going to do it? So the same thing as we have here, so five plus, so you have the six times seven. Now this time, you're going to add because you have a negative charge. And if you're going to do that, so how many, how, how many electrons we have here? Five plus six times seven, that's 42 plus one. So you have, is this 48? Am I right here? Yes. Okay. So 
We're going to distribute it again. So like that one. So from 48, we utilize 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's 8. So you still have 40. Am I right? And then. Oh, this is 6. That's my mistake. It should be 6. One, two, three, four, five, six. So this is six now. I thought it's four. So how much did I use here? One, two, three, four, five, six. So that means I have 12. So minus 12. So I have here 36. Then what do I do? I'm going to put six electron in six chlorine. So six times six would give me thirty-six. So I have to put it like this. Now you might ask yourself how about phosphorus? Can he have a 12 electrons in phosphorus? What would be your answer? No. Okay. The answer is yes. Why? Because the strict followers are C, N, O, and F. And P is not included. Now you may ask yourself, why, why can we accommodate why can it accommodate more than eight electrons? So if you're going to look at the periodic table, what period is phosphorus? If you have your periodic table, what period it is? It is in the three. third period, right? So what do you have in the third period? You have a 3S, you have a 3P, and a 3D. Now, what's the reason why they are strict followers, C, N, O, and F? Where you can find them in the periodic table? What period do you find C, N, O, and F? The second. The second. So in the second, you only have a 2S and a 2P. It can only accommodate at most eight electrons. But if you go on the third period, it has an additional orbital there. Okay? So that additional orbital will allow you to have extra more electrons. And we we're going to talk about that, the uh, what we call exception to the of the truth. Okay? Now, let's go to something wherein we have this so-called resonance. So when we have a resonance, this is a type of bonding in which a bonding pair of electrons is spread over a number of atoms rather than being localized between two atoms. So let's try to work on this one. What what molecule is O3? Anyone? What is O3? What do you call that? Ozone. Trioxide. Call it ozone. Okay. So ozone is the one that protects us from the greenhouse effect. And the scientist who discovered that CFC destroyed ozone has passed away last week, Mario Molina. So if you're going to look at the periodic, uh, I mean, if you're going to look at the Lewis structure of ozone, okay? So what we're going to do here is get the valence electron. So this is what, three times? What's the valence electron of oxygen? Six. Six, so you have their 18. So that means you have 18 electrons to share. So how are you going to do that? 
So you connect it like that. So you utilize what? 18 minus 4. So you have 14. So maybe you can have it like this. So how many did you utilize here now? 12. 12. So you still have two. So you put the two here. Now, is that OK? Is that correct? No. Not correct because yes. this is eight. This is eight, but this only has six. You have to double bond it. OK, so in that case, you have to share. So there are two scenarios that you can have. It could be like this. Or it could be like this. So these are what we call resonance structure. So what does this mean? What does the resonance structure mean? Okay. So you have a resonance structure when you have more than one Lewis structure to describe a given molecule. Now, the question is, which is the correct structure? Is it this one or this one? Which is the correct structure? Is it either one of them or neither one of them? If we're going to look at it. Aren't, aren't they the same? Hmm? Yeah. Aren't both. they the same? Okay. The correct structure is neither one of them. The correct structure is the average of the two structure. Huh? Why did they say so? They found out that the, the, the distance between, let's say, if you're going to number this uh, oxygen, so this is what? One, two, three, one, two, three. So they found out that the distance of one to two is equals to two to three. Okay. So how did they explain that? How did they explain that the distance is uh, what we call equivalent? Okay, so when they look at the bond length of each of them, they found out that they are the same. Okay, so how did they end up with that explanation that they have to be the same? So what you need to do is you're going to add the bonds that you have there and you divide it by the number of the structure. So for one to two, how many total bonds do you have? So you have a single bond here, you have a double bond here, so you have three. And then you divide it with two because you have two Lewis structure. For two to three, you also have three bonds there, one double and one single, and you divide them by two. So that means they are really equivalent. The correct Lewis structure is the average of that two. Okay? And if you're going to look further here, Using the resonance description, which is the resonance structure that we have there, the electron structure of a molecule or ion having the electrolyzed bonding is given by writing all possible electron dot formulas. And they are connected with a double headed arrow. Okay. So look at the term that they have there. What does the localized mean? Or what is localized? versus the localized. So the way that you look at this, maybe this is what? Stationary. And this is moving. So if you're going to look at this, oh, this one can go from here. And then when you go, it can go from there. Okay. So that is a resonance structure. So if you're going to look at the resonance structure, it's one or more or one of two or more Lewis structures for a single molecule that cannot be represented accurately by only one Lewis structure. 
Okay? So we could say the original structure there is a hybrid of these two. So in theory, this structure don't exist. The one that exists is the average of the two. Okay? So maybe I can tell you uh, right away in theory, we have two animals that we can find in fantasy books, but in a reality, you can find the animal hybrid for that. So if you hybrid the unicorn and the dragon, what do you get? Hmm? If you're going to hybrid a unicorn and a dragon, what do you get? Huh? So unicorn and dragon, they only exist in fantasy books. But if you hybrid them, you're going to see something that is in real life you can find. Anyone wants to guess that animal? that is a hybrid of two fantasy animals? What do you have? Huh? You get a rhino. It has the scale of the dragon and what's that? My daughter's uh, headband was using it yesterday, the horn of the unicorn. <laughs> okay? So the same thing with the Lewis structure of a resonance structure. The one that you read then, they don't really exist. The real one is the average of them. So we can go on another example of a resonance structure like this one. Draw the resonance formula for the acetate ion. So if you're going to look at this, this is how you will end up. So where you can do the resonance structure here? So you may end up just to see if, if this is really right. So this is what? This is four. This is three for the whole hydrogen. This is four. This is what? Six. This is six and one. So if you add them together, uh, six four six four so you have there 24 so one two three four five six seven so seven times two that would be 14 so you still have 10 so where do you get the 10 one two three four five six seven eight nine ten but as it says here this is a resonance uh, structure so how are we going to make it into a resonance structure uh, So we maintain this one, but this one, what will happen? The double bond will change. So that makes it the resonance structure. So initially here, you have a double bond and then it becomes a single bond. And here you have a single bond and then you become the double bond. But when they you look at it- huh? You put six dots for the double bond in the second? Yep. Second one? Yep. And six dots in the single bond? Yep. So what really? happened here? So this is the one that will be moving. So from double to single, and then here from single to double. So that's the, lo the localized bonding that you have there. Okay. The same thing when you have, let's say, the awesome, right? So if you have the awesome, it's like this. So you just put here the bracket and then put the negative sign on it. Okay. So that is the resonance uh, structure. So the next thing that we do going to go is the exceptions, although I already explained to you one of the exceptions. Okay. So some molecules, they don't uh, satisfy the octet rule. So all you need to remember, C, N, O, F, they should always be eight. The rest, 
they may or may not satisfy or obey the octet rule. Now, there are some that has odd number of electrons. So this is an example of the exception, like NO. Okay. So what does this mean? Why does this uh, electron has less than octet rule? So what do we call this exception to the uh, octet? So NO. For instance, if you're going to look at NO, so you have here this one. How many valence electron your N has? Anyone? Valence electron for nitrogen? Five. Five. Oxygen? Six. Six. So you have their 11 electron. So if you have that thing, you may end up writing it in this way. Ah. Now, this is only applicable for a certain kind of group. They call it the radicals. So the radicals, although I have mentioned C, N, O, and F element are strict followers, the radicals is another entity. Okay? If you look at the word itself, radicals, you know what radicals mean, right? Sometimes it's not uh, really uh, perceived as a positive thing. Sometimes it's always associated with uh, a, a negative connotation, right? As our president always says, the radical left, okay? So radicals, usually, they are odd electron molecule. And they're not good in their body, okay? The so-called free radicals. Some say they are the main cause of concept. So that's one exception to the uh, octet. The other one can either have what? Less or more than eight. Okay. So the one that is less than eight, these are the one before carbon. So these are the one that could be in the group 2A and 3A. So group 2A, you can only have at most what? Four electron. Group 3A, you can have at most six electron. Okay? They are not uh, required to follow the octet rule. So these are the ones that's less. Aluminum, which is group 3A, you also have only six electron. Okay? Now, for the one that has more than eight, these are the one that we have discussed earlier, the phosphorus. And the main explanation for that is they are in the third period and they have a D subshell, so they can have more than eight electrons. And usually the uh, element associated with those more than eight are sulfur, phosphorus, and chlorine. All of them in the third period. Okay? So the main explanation there is they have an additional D subshells. So for instance, let's try to do this one. Give the Lewis structure for IF5. So how are we going to do this? No worry, somebody mentioned there about formal charge. After this, it's the formal charge that will come out. So I have five. So you follow the rule. So iodine has how many? Valence electron. Seven. Seven. Fluorine also has seven. So five times seven, 35 plus seven, you have 42. And then you're going to arrange them with the five. So how much was utilized in bonding? One, two, three, four, five. So you have 10. So you still have 32. And then you have the one, two, three, four, five, six of them. So you have 30 that's utilized for fluorine. 
So how many is left yet? How many more left? Two. Two. So you put it on the valence electron in the, of the central atom. Okay. So here you will see how many electrons are there in the central atom. So you have five bonding pairs. So that's a uh, 10 plus additional lone pair. So overall you have 12 electrons in your central atom. Okay, question? Before we go to the one who is so excited, the formal charge. So the formal charge. So when we have the, the, the formal charge, okay, usually the formal charge of an atom in the Lewis formula is the hypothetical charge you obtain by assuming that bonding electrons are equally shared between bonded atoms and that the electrons of each lone pair belong completely to one atom. You can also say an atom's formal charge is just the difference between the number of the valence electron in an isolated atom and the number of electrons assigned to the atom in a Lewis structure. So there's a formula for that, this one. Okay? The number of valence electron in an isolated atom or free atom minus one half of the numbers of electrons in the bond, bonding pair, minus the number of the uh, atom or electrons in the lone pair. And the sum of the formal charge of the atom equals the charge of the formula. Okay. Now, what's the use of this formal charge? If I'm not mistaken, I, I told you before that when we have a carbon dioxide, usually this is how it looks like and not this one. So what makes this a much better Lewis structure or the correct Lewis structure compared to that? It has something to do with this rule, okay? Formal charges, they can help determine the most likely Lewis structure using three rules. Whenever you can write several Lewis structure for a molecule, you choose the one having the lowest magnitude of formal charges. And when two proposed Lewis structure have the same magnitudes of formal charge, choose the one having the negative formal charge on the more electronegative atom. And when possible, choose Lewis structure that do not have like charges on adjacent atoms. So let's try to work on this. How are we going to assign the formal charge here? So let's say the first one. What's the valence electron of carbon? Anyone? Four. Okay, so you have four. And as you're going to see here, you have what? Four bonding pairs. And the four bonding pairs are how many electrons? Eight. 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 Does it have any lone pairs? Carbon? Does it have any lone pairs? No. So what is the formal charge for this carbon? Zero. So you put the zero there. Okay. Now let's look at the oxygen. So what can we say about the oxygen? Both of them are the same, right? 
Two bonding pairs, two lone pairs. So let's try. What's the valence electron of oxygen? Six. Six. And then one half of two bonding pairs, so that says four electrons. And then how many electrons here? One, two, three, four. So what do you get? What's the formal charge of oxygen? Do we get zero? Yes. So we put zero here. We put zero here. So what's the overall charge of the carbon dioxide? It's also zero, right? Because the sum of the formal charges of the atom equals the charges, okay? Or equals the charge on the formula. Now let's go here. Is this carbon still the same as this carbon? Yes or no? There's no lone pair. There's still four bonding pairs. So most likely it has a formal charge of zero. Now we go with the oxygen on the left. So what is missing here? I think I have to put one lone pair and I have to put here three lone pairs. So how do we put here? Six minus one half of what? Three. One, two, three, four, three. So times two, so that's six, right? Minus, what's the lone pairs? How many electrons there? Two. Two. So what's the number that you have there? Six minus one half of six minus two. So you have? Hello? One. One. So we could say plus one there. Now, this one has different formal charge. Why? You only have one bonding pair. So one half of two. And then you have how many? One, two, three, four, five, six. So what's the number that you get there? Negative one. So you have these two Lewis structure with the different formal charge. So what's the rule? You follow this. So the first rule, number one, if it's not satisfied, the second one, and if it's not the third one, but I think by number one, you already satisfy it, right? Whenever you can write several Lewis structure for a molecule, choose the one having the lowest magnitude of formal charge. Is zero, 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 the lowest one? So if you're going to look at the magnitude here, all of these are zero. Here you have a positive one, you have a negative one. So this is the correct one. So that's how you choose the correct formal charge because that's the one that you're supposed to do here in the next one. So if you're going to look at this, this is what? Zero, zero, zero. And this is, if I'm not mistaken, a negative one, a zero, and a positive one. Let's try another one. So this one, ah. versus this one. So everyone will say that hydrogen has zero in both of them. Because what do you have? 
1 minus 1 half of 2. So that's equals to 0. Okay. How about the first carbon here? What's the formal charge? So you have 4 minus 1 half of what? Is that 4? Because you have two bonding pairs there. Minus 1, 2, 3, 4. So what do you get? Negative 2. Negative 2. Wait, I think I make a long... It should be like this. So I just want to make sure because we didn't write the, the correct uh, valence electron. So HCOH1461. So how do you, how much do you get? 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This one, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it should be like this. Sorry. So this one should be this and this. So what's the formal charge for carbon? No, no, it should be three, so that should be six. My, 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 my bad. So four plus one, uh, minus one half of six, because you have three bonding pairs there, minus two. So you have there, Negative one. Negative one. Negative one. one. How about the oxygen? So six minus one half of what? Six minus one, two. What Is do you one? have? Huh? One. Positive one. Positive one. So negative one, positive one. So both of these are zero. Now, how about this one? The carbon. So you have four minus one half of eight minus zero. What do you get? Zero. 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 Now the oxygen, you have six minus one half of one, two. So that's four minus one, two, three, four. What do you have? Zero. Zero. So which is the correct one? Which is the correct Lewis structure? The first one or the second one? Second one. Okay, so this is the correct one. So that's how you assign the formal charge and how you use it. So usually you use it to determine the correct Lewis structure. Okay. Now the last part that we have here has something to do with bond length and bond order. So what does this mean? So the bond length or the bond distance, that's just the distance between the nuclei in a bond. So for instance, a single bond is longer than a double bond, which is longer than a triple bond. Or we could say a triple bond is shorter than a double bond, which is also shorter than a single bond. Okay? Now, how about relating bond length to bond strength. How do you think these are related? The shorter the bond length is the what? Strength. Huh? Oh, the, the, the shorter the, stronger, the bond, the stronger. Like the stronger. Okay, the shorter the bond length, the stronger is the bond. 
You want a, an example on that? This one. How are you going to write the Lewis structure of nitrogen? Anyone? How many valence electron nitrogen has? Five. Five. So if you have two, so that means you have 10 electrons to play around. So what's the only possible Lewis structure with 10 elements, with 10 electrons? It's just this one, right? Now, what can you say with nitrogen? It's the most abundant gases in the atmosphere. Okay. And when it goes inside our body as nitrogen, it will come out of our body as what? Nitrogen in. And what is it form when it goes out our body? It's still nitrogen. Okay. In fact, the only way you can have nitrogen being uh, its triple bond being uh, what we call broken is during lightning. Why? Because lightning is a very energetic process. So usually when do lightning happen? During rain, right? So they said, whenever there's lightning after the rain, you can find an abundance of mushroom. Why? Because the nitrogen bond in N2 was broken and it absorbed by water. So you form there some nitrate or nit nitrite. Okay? And they are usually uh, what we call uh, utilized a source of nutrients. What is our source of nitrogen in our body? Is it nitrogen? Where do we get the nitrogen that our body needs? Is it from the nitrogen gas? No, we get it from anyone? Where do we get it? we get it from proteins. What's the building back, back of protein? Anyone? Amino acid. Amino acids. We get it from amino acid. And what do we say? There are 10 essential amino acids. So when you say 10 essential amino acids, the body cannot synthesize them. It needs to be supplied in the form of food. Okay? I don't know if you know the 10 amino acids, but, but, but I can introduce them to you in the name of this. Ah. Maybe we'll do it like that. So he's, it can be named as private Tim Hall or private Matt Hill. So those letters there, those are the first letter of the amino acids. Okay, I'm not asking you to memorize them, just uh, some an FYI thing. So those top, they need to be supplied by nutrients. Because you cannot, the body cannot break down the triple bond. Okay, and in also saying here, the bond order is defined in terms of the Lewis formula the number of pairs of electron in a bond. So if a single bond, the bond order is one. In a double bond, the bond order is two. In a triple bond, the bond order is three. So bond length decreases as bond order increases. So the thing that we're going to do for the sake that you have a problem like this in the out, okay, is how are we going to determine the energy here? So consider the propylene molecule. One of the carbon-carbon atom has a length of 150 picometer. The other is 134 picometer. So identify each bond with the bond length. 
So what do you think is this one? What's the band length of this? Anyone? That is your 150 or 134? 150. This is what? Yeah, 150. I think you do. That's the 150. And that's the 150. This is the 134. Okay. And if you're going to determine the bond energy, so this is just the average enthalpy change for breaking the A and B bond in a molecule in the gas space. And the bond energy is a measure of bond strength. The larger the bond energy, the stronger is the bond. So a triple bond has a, what we call stronger bond compared to a double bond, which is stronger than a single bond. So the bond energy, this is for the sake when you do the owl, okay, you can use it to estimate the enthalpy change. And to do so, we imagine the reaction of two steps, the breaking of the bond and the forming of the bond. New bonds can only be formed if old bonds are broken. And if you're going to get the enthalpy change, it's just the sum of the energies, bond energies of the broken bonds and subtract it with the bond energies for the bonds that are formed. And when delta H is negative, heat is released, or you have an exothermic, which you're going to learn in chapter six. And when delta H is positive, heat is absorbed, which means it's an endothermic. So the, la the I think this is the last slide that we have here. So this is the reaction, and this is the product. And for us to determine, okay, we have to identify which bond or bonds uh was or were broken so one of them is that one you broke the double bond to give you a single bond and another one that's broken is the one between chlorine and the energy needed that we have there is this so you have to supply this so you need 240 kilojoules to break the clcl bond and you need 602 kilojoules to break the carbon double bond to make it a carbon single bond. Now what are form? Okay. So you form the single bond and two CL, uh, two CCL bond. And when that happens, you release this amount of energy. So the question now is how much enthalpy change do you have? So the bond that was broken minus the bond that was formed. So this is the delta H that is negative, which means energy is what? Release or absorb? Absorb. Okay, so it's a negative. So energy was? Released. Release. Okay. If you're doubtful, look at this statement that we have here. So when delta H is negative, heat is released. When delta H is positive, heat is absorbed. So that's chapter nine. And that's not included in our exam. And we're going to go back on it in next week. So the, uh, when we resume class after the exam, although we go with chapter 10 right away, you're going to have to chapter nine, okay? So question. Question. Question?
So only 62 of you took the practice exam. Out of what? 70 something? How do I know that? Because it says here, this test has 62 attempts. So for information on editing questions, click more below. So these are the questions that you have, right? So what's the answer here? Two and three. Okay. So the answer there is two and three. Okay. So this is the solubility rules that is given to you. So you're not going to memorize them. Is that clear? Yes. So that save you time. The next one, I cannot do it in the form of the thing because I have to access it in the in responder. So what I do is like I'm editing. So what is the oxidation number of chromium? So the check that is already seven. Uh, expect one questions like this. Okay. So how do we end up with seven? Because oxygen is negative two, which is times by four to make eight, but it's negative in general. So CR must equal seven. Okay, so you have there a negative eight from oxygen. And if you add them with the charge in the chromium, it should give you a negative one. So what's the number added with negative eight will give you negative one. And the question that you have here, you will be have different uh, what we call compound. But the principle is just getting the oxidation number or the oxidation state. How about this one? So these are the shapes of the molecular orbital. So this is what? The circle is what? N equals one. S. This is an S, right? S. S. This is a P. And both of these are D. And it's saying that to you, what is or are the molecular shapes that refers to a quantum number N is equals to two and L is equals to one. That's the only information that you need. So when L is equals to one, so that means it is letter what? P. P. If L is equals to zero, then your answer there is two. If L is equals to two, then your answer is one and four. Do you get that? Yes. Yes. Okay. So this one. Now, the thing is, I think I have two questions of this type in the exam. So that means the periodic table is not beside it. So you have to look where the periodic table is. Okay. So the one that's being asked here is increasing atomic mass, giving magnesium, sodium, phosphorus, silicon, and argon. So that means I start with the smallest with number one and then the biggest with number five. So the smallest that I have here is what? I would say it's argon. And then P, and then SI, and then MG, and then NA. So you're going to put number on it. Okay. So the way that you do it, this is the smallest, the AR, and NA is the biggest so the way you're going to put it you might be given the different display order there so increasing atomic radius so the one there is there's something wrong here it should not be like this yeah 
So that's why I can always edit it. No, argon should be number one, followed by phosphorus, followed by silicon, followed by magnesium, and then sodium. Anyway, I, I tried to look at it. Yeah, correct order. Argon, phosphorus, silicon, magnesium, and sodium. This is the display order that you have. Okay. I'm going to look at it. Now this one. So this is the formula. And this is available in a certain number. And all you need to do is answer there, yes. If you don't answer it, there's really no points on that. So you are asked here, calculate the energy of uh, electromagnetic radiation that has a wavelength of 963.5 nanometer. So how are we going to do this? So I need to get this one to show you. 963.5 nanometer. So the one that's being asked is, what is the energy? So we have E equals to what? HB. And we know C is equals to wavelength frequency. Right? So we're going to replace the frequency that we have there. So what will happen? We have E equals to HC like that. And all we need to do, okay, this is given, uh, if I'm not mistaken, 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34. And then C is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And we divide it. So this is the thing. This is 963.5 nanometer. So we need to convert that to what? Meter. Meter. So if you're going to do the calculation there, you have a unit that is in joules. And if you have that, I think the correct answer that you have there is this one. 2.06 times 10 to the negative 19. So... Was that formula given? This one only. So it's up to you to manipulate it. So that, what does it mean? The moles, you have to know it yourself. The molarity is moles over liters because it's not supply here, okay? Because if I'm not mistaken, that's the next question that we have. So calculate the molarity of a solution prepared by diluting a certain amount of molarity NaOH to a certain volume. So why is it like this? Because each of you will get different numbers. Okay? So if you're going to do the calculation here, usually that's the formula that I have. So I'm the only one who set it like that. But what I expect is all of you will have different number here. And I set that you're going to have 80 different numbers set. And I also set that if you are within 2% of the value, you will get the credit. Okay. So if you're going to look at this, this is just what? A C1B1 problem. 
I would suggest you don't memorize the formula I put here. <laughs> if you're going to look at the concept that you have, this is just a C1B1 equals to C2B2. So one of them is missing. So all you need to do is divide it by B2 on both sides. That's why you have that formula there. So now you see the secret on how I do your question. Okay. Is it mass? I don't think that's mass. Okay. It's usually molarity and volume. Okay. And the last one that I have here, so this is determine the mass of KCL. So the molar mass is already given to you there. Needed to prepare XML of Y molarity of KCL. So if you're going to look at this, the one that's being asked, what's the mass? So what's the one that given? Molarity and volume. And the one that's being asked is the mass. Another one that's given is the molar mass. So if you remember, molarity is equals to moles over volume in liter. And you can break down moles as mass over molar mass over volume in liter. So if you have it like this, this is given, this is given, this is given, and you need to get the mass. So that's the question in your thing. So I think that's the last one that I have here. So question. I, I actually had a question. It's, it's not about this practice exam though. Okay. It's, so as you can um, see, the example is already like uh, ready, but I'm just going to put that in the Respondus uh, lockdown browser. It's it's a question about the um sorry I'm just trying to pull it up the exam to reviewer it's question eighteen okay um it's it's when we're because I I looked at the answer key on how to do it and mm -hmm. it it has man now I can't think of the word for English but it's when you do the first step and the second step, you need to multiply the first step by two, two over one, and then Maybe by the grams per mole over one. Stoichiometric ratio. Yeah, it's that, exactly. Can you just go over kind of how that works? So all you need to do is know what we call the, what do we call this? Dimensional analysis, okay? So if you're going to recall, Maybe you're given, let's say, the moles of A, and you have a reaction A plus 2B producing AB2 something. So the way that you're going to do is you need to get the moles of B. So how are you going to set this up? If you get given the mole of A, you're asked to get the mole of B. How do you set this up? So for every one mole of A, you have two mole of two B. Moles. You just cancel out the A there, so you end up with mole B. Okay, cool. That that does answer my question. So it does go by molar, like the molar mass. Uh, mole, mole. Usually, it's a, yeah, moles. you can go also with the yeah. uh, moles thing. All you need to do is be consistent with the unit. 
So whatever is the given unit, you have to cancel it out to get whatever the unit that you're looking for. Perfect, thank you. Any more? You still have time. Because I don't know what to do. Maybe I'll shape myself if you still don't do well or you do well in the exam. <laughs> Um, professor, the exam is going to be during class? Uh, from 12, you, you can take it from 12 to 2, but it's 90 minutes long. So please take it from, uh, start at 12, or uh, and the last one is 12.30. Because sometimes when you submitted it past 2, they will say you're late. Because usually I, I look at the record on how or what time you submitted or what time you took it. If you took it past two, uh, it might be luck anymore. And uh, you will not be going to get your score right away. We set it up like that. So there will be suspense. <laughs> so after you take the exam, you rest for the weekend and then prepare for another week. That's how you're going to do it. Okay, don't make it too hard after the exam. We'll see what happens. Question. Uh, the, uh, I saw some of you watching the video based on the views because you're the only one supposed to view it. <laughs> but still, it's only few. Yeah, you don't you, you won't know the grade after you, you submitted it. I try to hit it unless I mess up again. If you if 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 you look at the exam at the practice exam, I think I messed up. I didn't set it at 30 minutes. I don't know if you observed that, but it should be 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. But I make sure I'm going to check it up. So question. So if you took the uh, practice exam, so you, you have an idea how it's going to be. It's almost like that, okay? And I may not make myself available there during Zoom because sometimes I'm just a little bit discouraged. Somebody will, like the first exam, somebody showed up in the Zoom and then they said, oh, we have an exam today, professor. So I don't know what to do <laughs> with that student. <laughs> okay. But if ever you have a problem, because you cannot email me right away because your computer is on a lockdown. You cannot use their browser. So maybe the way you can do is email me after the exam and I will look at it. Usually I can track what happened to your exam. So please don't tell me that your internet went down and I can see that you answered the question. Because I have a way to monitor what really happens to you, what happened during the exam. So if ever they, you saw that you were hung out, I can see it right away. But if you say you were hung out and I see you answer all question, that's not going to have a good reflection on your part. Okay. So question. How many questions is it? 25? Like uh, 27, but there's additional three. That is the periodic table, the solubility rules, and the formula sheet. So you just have 27 and it ranged from three points to, if I'm not mistaken, six or seven points in calculation. Overall is 100. Are you gonna do an extra credit thing like you did in the last time? Uh, we don't know. Okay. We only do that if the result is that good. <laughs> That's why I don't want to make the thing available yet. But so, whenever there's an extra credit, I think uh, I will ask you to attend a seminar at 2 o'clock next week on Tuesday. 
I'm going to send the detail for that. Question. So, calculation questions or? There is a calculation question. You see in the practice exam, there's some calculation questions there. Okay. I just didn't give it to you because what I showed you is the master uh, exam for me. But when you took it, there's already a number on those X and Y. And those who took the practice exam, you know what I mean, right? You, you, you saw the questions there. So now you see how I make the question different from which one of you? <laughs> I have a question. I, you just said that we might have an extra credit if we attend a seminar. Well, it depends on the thing. But uh, I was asked by the dean to make sure that some students attend that uh, there's a speaker from sci a science editor. So there's a time for the student and there's a time for a faculty. So I... the dean ordered us to make sure some of our students are going to. It's a virtual meeting, so. What is the whole But don't don't bank on it, okay? <laughs> of course, but like, what if we have class during that time? Then if... I cannot do anything. That's why it's extra credit. I mean, for those only who are available, I'm not going to make a requirement then because I don't want you telling other teacher that. Oh, Mr. Mohika or Dr. Mohika uh, require us to do this. Nope, don't do that. If I learn that, I'm not going to give you extra credit. <laughs> I might penalize you. It's just for those Holden who are free. Is that the Holden Thorpe presentation? The Thorpe something, yep. Okay, yeah. So maybe your biology teacher asks you also to attend. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> that's the thing. Yeah, I'm already going. But don't make it like say, oh, if you, if you have what we call another class, then don't force yourself. Okay, because we understand if you cannot attend it. I'm going to email it to you. I just get the notes uh, this morning <laughs> that we I, I'm, I'm, I'm required even to attend the student one because I cannot attend the one. We have a class from the one to two. Okay, so I can only attend the two to three after I fetch my daughter. <laughs> So question, for those who have questions, we still have how many, six minutes before I leave and fetch my daughter. For those who are done, you, you can go. <laughs> but I, I tend to stay until 1.30. So any more question that bugging you and you want to have an answer on it? This is the time. So I, I just hope you don't disappoint me with the result. <laughs> because if, if I still be disappointed, I don't know what to do anymore, to tell you frankly. <laughs> because I give everything to you now. Now you, ha you have it one at a time, I all of them, all at once. As the song said, all at once. <laughs> so if you ask for more than that, I don't know uh, what else can I do. 